Joining us now, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson. And Gene, you have a new column entitled, We Have a National Emergency, All Right? Its name is Donald Trump. And you write in part this, the president's decision to officially declare an emergency, to pretend to build an unbuildable border wall is not only an act of constitutional vandalism. It's also an act of cowardice, a way to avoid the wrath of Ann Coulter, Rush Limbaugh, and the rest of the far-right commentariat. It's an end run around Congress, and as such, constitute, uh, constitute a violence of his oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States, which gives Congress, not the President, the authority to decide how public money is spent. It does not give Trump the right to fund projects that Congress will not approve. Authoritarian leaders do that sort of thing. The puffed up wannabe strong men now living in the White House is giving it a try. And, and Joe, I'll let you take it to Gene and others, but I'll pop in there. Everyone is so um, shocked that there might have been a conversation about the 25th Amendment. I don't understand why a conversation at this point isn't on the table as a possible, but just a conversation. Well, you can have your conversation all you want. I think it's want. fair to have. Well, it's fair. I mean, you know what? We could also talk about the Red Sox and why, I should, be, why I should be batting cleanup this year. But That's a lot a of people think that have. he is driven by perhaps some, some issues that well, impact the presidency and, and make the American people unsafe, and therefore they discuss the 25th Amendment. Why is that bad? Well, I, they, I, like I said... Because when I brought it up, it was a no-go. It, it is America. If you want to talk about the 25th Amendment, you can. But Donald Trump, a lot, a lot, a lot of really smart progressives that I know say the way to get Donald Trump out of office is to beat him at the ballot I box agree. and to send a message to future generations, if you run the White House this way, you're going to get trounced. So, uh, Gene, um, the, 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 the president, uh, of course, is talking about declaring this national emergency. Mm -hmm. Even Ann Coulter is saying now, I mean, she still turned on him and said, you can't yeah. declare a national emergency for a bill that you sign uh, then, and you declare a national emergency to overturn some things that you signed into the law uh, 24 hours before. It's over. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. I mean, she's really not having it. She she wants him not to sign this bill, and he is going to sign the bill, apparently, although it's early. Watch the Twitter feed. But um, uh, assuming that he does, uh, you know, she's, she's going to have a fit of peak. Um, I think his other, the rest of his amen chorus, uh, Sean Hannity and, and probably Limbaugh, I think will go along with this and pretend uh, that he's going to be able to build the wall with uh, this emergency declaration, which I don't think he's going to be able to do. I think it's. I think it is going to be uh, challenged, uh, probably in court, probably with a resolution of, of disapproval um, that would originate in the House and have to be voted on in the Senate, um, uh, and uh, and tied up uh, for for years. And as you said earlier, he'll claim that he's being stopped um, uh, from defending you against these. Uh, rapists and MS-13 members by the liberal courts and the and the dastardly Democrats and this and that and that'll be his big theme in the campaign. Yeah, and 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 John Bedore, it's, uh I, I, I'm curious uh, what your thoughts are about the trajectory of Donald Trump's political fortunes over the past couple of weeks. Two, three weeks ago, I would have put his chances of getting reelected at maybe 10 percent, maybe 15 percent. You don't get reelected when you bounce between 35 and 40 percent, 41, 42 percent. You just don't. But I must say, you, you, you look at the sorry performance of some Democrats on Capitol Hill in Virginia. You look at the blackface scandal in Virginia and the Democrats' inability to handle that. You look at the anti-Semitic remarks on Capitol Hill. Democrats came out strongly against that. I get it. But now you look at Staten Island, you, I, I, or, or, or not Staten Island, Queens. you look at Long Island City, yeah. you look at Queens, you look at all of this. And suddenly you look at New York uh, state legislature applauding late-term abortion bills. And suddenly 
you have given Donald Trump and more specifically Stephen Miller their closing argument that would make them competitive in 2020 if the Democrats keep acting this way. Right. Well, I mean, I think as Donnie said at the beginning of the show, uh, we see a, a, a roadmap in the uh, a Amazon cancellation in Long Island City, which is you say uh, the left wing Democrats cost 25,000 jobs in New York City. Now extrapolate that from the 8 million in New York to the 330 million in the country. These are the jobs that they're going to kill if you get them reelected. Now, I think that Trump, you see a huge missed opportunity for Trump over the last couple of weeks and a misreading of the polls. So he goes down to 35 during the shutdown, right? The shutdown's over. All the polls have him going up six to seven points, right? So he's back at like 42, 43. You read that, you say, you know, maybe he shouldn't have listened to Rush Limbaugh and Ann Coulter on the shutdown. Maybe they cost him seven points. If he listens to them, he's in the 30s. If he doesn't listen to them, he's in the 40s. And he could have used that wisdom to say, I'm signing this bill. We're going to fight for this wall. We're not stopping. I'm going to mention it every day, da da da. But then going back, even though she hates the bill and hates that he signed it and says it's over, all of that. But continuing this fight with the national emergency keeps the conflict between Trump and the Hill going. It makes him look divisive. And, you know, he needs to start building up from 42 to 47, 48 if he's going to win the presidency. And I don't think he's reading his polls right or reading the national mood right. Joe, speaking of the national mood, I want to... You know, you're open yesterday. I love to bust your chops. But the first five minutes of yesterday's show, I, I think, sums up everything when you talked about the overreach mm -hmm. of the Democrats. And we can't forget, it was only a few months ago that the Democrats trounced the Republicans by 9 percent. And those were not the crazy, pro not crazy, those were not the extreme progressives those were winning. Those are the more traditional candidates. This country is still three to one center right versus liberals. Yes, the Democratic Party has gone from 25 percent to 50 percent liberal, but they are still outmanned. And if at the end of the day, the Democrats are not talking to those folks in the suburbs of Pennsylvania and suburbs of Philly and the suburbs of Virginia and the suburbs of Milwaukee, they're going to lose. And there is this overreach and the Democrats are missing it and handing it to Trump. I, I could write Trump's entire campaign going forward, and it's an unbeatable proposition. Well, you know, and, and Willie, that's what we were talking about last week, as offensive as the El Paso speech was. You listened to the last five minutes and you thought, oh, my God, he's got his closing argument for 2020 already. A lot of it is based on unforced errors by Democrats who don't listen to Nancy Pelosi, who don't act like Nancy Pelosi, who aren't aren't politically shrewd like Nancy Pelosi. This this election, like all elections, are going is going to be determined in places like Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, North Carolina, and Florida. A lot of those states went for Barack Obama uh, a couple times and then went for Donald Trump. And the candidate who gets that will be the candidate who becomes the nominee and perhaps the candidate who can beat Donald Trump. It's been interesting to see that it's been Nancy Pelosi who's pulled back on a few occasions here in the last couple of months, the more progressive wing of her party, whether it's on the questions of impeachment or the Green New Deal. She's trying to sort of pull back and rein in a little bit those progressives. And Joyce Vance, just want to ask you again on the question of this national emergency. Obviously, politically for the president, as Joe said, it gives him cover. Yes, I signed the deal, but I'm going to keep fighting and I'll fight this thing all the way to the Supreme Court. That's how important that wall is to me. If I get turned away at the Supreme Court, at least I went all the way to the wall, if you'll forgive the pun there. So what happens, do you think, in the process of going through the courts here? What's the first step before it may even get to the Supreme Court? So this will have to go first to a trial court, one of the federal district courts, onto a circuit court, and then to the Supreme Court. And there are already multiple groups looking at filing initial lawsuits. In California, the attorney general has referenced it. Nancy Pelosi has said Congress might have some claims because of violation of Congress's uh, power of the purse. And then we know some of the civil rights groups are looking at filing on the border. There may be people who lose funding who will file lawsuits over that. 
So I think Such the question mess. isn't how will it progress, but how many places mm -hmm. will it progress in, and which of those cases will end up in the Supreme Court to tee the issue up for decision. Yeah, and, and, and obviously a lot of people are going to be watching that. And, you know, Mika, just to wrap up this segment, it's mm -hmm. important to note that this isn't about progressives versus moderates in the Democratic Party, even though most recent polls show that a majority of Democrats want the Democratic Party to go in a moderate, a more moderate direction than a progressive direction. Uh, it's always important to remember Barack Obama was the second most progressive Democrat in the Senate when he ran for president in 2008. This is a progressive party. They're going to most likely nominate a progressive leader, but it's got to be a progressive nominee that does not commit the sort of unforced errors that open the Democratic Party up to Donald Trump yeah. and give him a pathway to reelection. Because I can't tell you how many senior Democrats I've spoken with over the past week who now fear that Donald Trump has a better than even chance of getting realized. Uh, a lot of it is temperament and, and discipline, um, which is why I was so impressed by Pete Buttigieg on the show yesterday. Um, just yeah, as, it's great. You know, just as a, a contrast temperamentally. Joyce Vance, uh, thank you very much. Coming up, much more on Amazon's decision to scrap plans for a New York City headquarters. What one of the company's top policy officials is telling NBC News next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.